Now I'm going to show you how to put a title on one of our clips. So drag your CTI over the clip you want your title to appear over. This title we're going to make will be a super for the talent's name. So I'm going to drag my CTI so it's sitting over the interview grab here. Go up to title, down to new title and select default still. Give it a name and keep the other settings here the same. Here we've got our title maker in which there are a bunch of tools we use to create our title. So we will start by making a box that will form the basis of our super title. Whatever tool we pick on the left, we're going to get options specific to it appear on the right. So with my rectangle tool selected, after drawing this box, I have the option to change the fill color and opacity of the rectangle. We can then draw a text box and put text in it, change the color, font, etc. Once we're done here, we can close the window and now in our import bin, we can see we've got our title here. From here, we can simply drag it down onto the timeline, making sure it is sitting on a video track above the video we want the super to appear on. Titles sit on a transparent background, so we can put these over our footage and see them sitting on top with the video behind. We can also apply transitions to titles if we want them to fade in or out with our footage. For example, if I search for additive dissolve and click and drag this onto my super, you can see it now fades in and fades out. With titles, you also have the option to use titles that are based on a template that comes with Premiere Pro. So to do that, we go up to Title, New Title, and then we select Based on Template. And you'll see within this dialog box that opens, there are a whole range of templates. For supers, you'd be most likely going to use the lower thirds. And you can select one of these if you like an aspect of the template. You can select it and then you can make changes to it as well. So they're good if you just like to get an idea of what supers can look like. If you want to get your creativity flowing, you can have a look at the templates. For a better breakdown on the different aspects of the title maker, see our video on title making. Now we've covered titles, we're going to put some music in the background of our video. So I'm going to import my audio track as I would import any other photo or video clip. And then I'm going to drag the file over to my source monitor. This works the same way it did for video. We can set in and out points. Or if you know you want the whole track, simply drag the audio down onto our timeline. But this time we want to make sure we're placing it on one of our audio tracks. We can shorten our audio track using our selection tool. And this was demonstrated earlier on in the video with our selection tool and shortening a video clip. So we hover over the end of the audio clip until our red arrow bracket appears and we can drag it in to the left so the audio track is the same length as our video. If we click this arrow to scroll out the audio track our audio is sitting in, we can now see the waveform of the clip and we can see that it's quite loud at the moment and it's overpowering the audio from our interview grabs. To change the volume, we can move this yellow line up and down to be more precise, we can right click on the audio clip and move up to audio gain. Here we can click in this box. If we add a number, for example, six, we will be making the audio louder. To decrease the volume, we need to enter a minus number, for example, minus six. If I hit enter, you can see the waveform size has become smaller and the audio is now quieter. It's still not quite quiet enough, so I'm going to add more minus gain to make it softer so I can hear my interview audio nice and clearly. We can also add transitions to audio. Constant power is a good crossfade effect which we can drop onto the end or between two audio clips. 
and we can also alter the length of the fade as we did with video transitions. So now we've got a video with a few clips, cutaway, transitions and some music behind. It's now time to export this as a complete video file. Before we do that, we've got to make sure that our timeline is selected. And we know that this is the case when we see the yellow line around it like so. We also need to make sure our export bar is in line with our video. If it's longer and dragged out past our video, it will export all this black at the end. If it is only dragged out to halfway through our video, only that much of the video will export. OK, so with our timeline selected and our export bar dragged out to the length of our video, we are now ready to export. We're going to head up to File, down to Export, and click on Media. This brings up our export window where we'll choose our export settings. We can see our source window here and also our output, which is what the video will look like with the settings we choose. There are a bunch of different formats we can choose from, but the one we're going to pick is H.264. We can then go into our presets and choose HD 720p 25. All other settings can be left as is. This will create an MP4 file, which is compatible with both Mac and PC and can be easily uploaded to Vimeo and YouTube. Also make sure you check your estimated file size, which is located here and check that that's not too large for where you're going to be uploading your video or sending your video. It's definitely something that needs to be considered. If we had have picked another setting, we may have had a higher quality file, but the higher the quality, the higher the file size. H.264 is a happy medium with good compatibility. We now need to click on our output name so we can rename our file and ensure it's saving to the correct location. So I'm going to navigate to where I'm saving my project and make a new folder named Output. This is a good habit to get into because it's a good place to save any final versions so I know exactly where to go to find my exported versions. I'm now going to name it appropriately, ending with final underscore one. If I export further edits, I can name them underscore two, underscore three, and so on. And that makes it easy to find the most recent final export you've created. Okay, so we now have two options. We can click export and wait for the file to export within Premiere Pro, or we can click Q and the file will open in Adobe Media Encoder. This is a good option if you need to keep working in Premiere Pro and don't want to wait for the file to finish exporting, as this can take some time. Once Adobe Media Encoder is open, all you need to do is check that your settings are correct and hit the play button and the file will save to the location you specified. So now we can go to our folder where we've been saving and play the video we've created. So there's a very basic introduction to Premiere Pro. If you'd like to know more, you can sign up to a Maps Hour session where we go into a bit more depth and where hands-on help is available. <laughs>